Hey everybody, this is Way to Fail with the new series, Dark Souls, Prepare to Die Edition, which was the viewer's choice selection from you all, so thanks, you're going to be watching me die quite a bit. Now for those of you who are not familiar with it, Dark Souls is a very challenging action RPG. So it involves you wielding your weapon, going through hordes of monsters that are very, very difficult. Even the most basic enemies can slaughter you, beat you in the face, as you'll likely see here. Now, this is a game that I do have some experience with. I'm playing it on the PC. I did have to fight with Games for Windows Live for about two hours just to get this going, even though it was previously working earlier this week. So, that aside, if you are interested in this game and you like it, I do recommend it. It's a fun game, despite some of the challenges you have to use with the port. But what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get started and make a new game. Character creation is pretty straightforward as we're just going through the first time set up here because I deleted all my saves. That's fine, that's fine. That's fine, I'm using the DS Fix mod here and I'm using the Xbox 360 controller which I highly recommend you use for this. So you actually get to type on the keyboard to get this in, which is nice. Instead of having to type it out, but we are going to be do it, making probably the only important decision here, and in the grand scheme of things, it's not a very important decision. Unless you want to choose Depraved, which I am not cool enough to be a Depraved character here. Because it has high soul level and a lot of stats already spent. Very tough start. A lot of people choose Pyromancer. And I was actually my first choice when I was playing in this game, but pretty much what the advantage of Pyromancer is more than anything else is that you start at level 1. You have the most customization of anything, and the Pyromancer Flame is good throughout the game so you can cast fire spells from the get-go as this is kind of a swords and sorcery style of game in that you have big weapons you can use or magic but really as this game progresses you can customize your characters however you want to a lot of what the start with is just kind of aesthetic from the start and I like starting with the bandit in this game a few reasons the battle axe is one of my favorite weapons it starts with a nice shield. It has a little spider on it. It's actually pretty useful, especially when you get to Blight Town, even though you find one pretty quickly if you go topside Blight Town. But he also starts with high vitality, endurance, and strength, which are skills I like. So we're going to go with the Bandit. And because of the Bandit, pretty much you do have a few gifts you can get. Pretty much all of these can be gotten in the game, but Master Key gives you some early choices. We're just going to go slim. Why not? Faces don't really matter. Hair doesn't really matter because... You're going to be hiding it behind equipment anyway, as you can see. It's already behind my hood here. So that's my character. That's a way to fail self. And what we're going to do is just start right in. This is going to be a full playthrough from the get-go, from the very beginning. So we're going to start with the opening cinematic. And then we'll just talk about the game a little bit as we go on. So I hope you all enjoy. Thank you all for watching and thank you for voting this. I'm very excited about finally knocking Dark Souls off my list of games I need to finish. So let's start. In the Age of Ancients, the world was unformed, shrouded by fog. A land of grey crags, arch trees, and everlasting dragons. But then there was fire, and with fire, came disparity, heat and cold, life and death, and of course, light and dark. Then from the dark, they came and found the souls of lords within the flame. Nito, the first of the dead. The witch of Isolith and her daughters of chaos. Gwyn, the Lord of Sunlight, and his faithful knights, and the furtive pygmy, 
so easily forgotten. With the strength of lords, they challenge the dragons. Gwyn's mighty lords build upon the stone skins. Witches weaved great firestorms. Muto unleashed a miasma of death. That's where you start. What does it all mean? All shall be revealed in time. But you start off like many RPGs of, from before as a person. Yes, indeed. Well, not quite a person. The dark sign brands the undead. Because you're not quite living, because it is Dark land, Souls. The undead are corralled and led to the north. Where they are locked away to await the end of the world. This is your fate. Oh, hi, rat. As you can see, the little pile of rats just going across the floor. There I am, just sitting, not looking my sharpest. And there's someone else dropping a dead corpse. What does all this mean? What does all that introduction mean? I'll be revealed in time. I do like the story of Behind Dark Souls. It's one of those ones that doesn't beat you over the head. You get some good details, you get some... A lot of subtext that you have to get by looking at items, looking at stuff that's completely optional that you don't have to look at. But most importantly, we start with a key and we have very little in the way of inventory. Just a really weight, weak weapon. But all we're going to do here is, I don't believe there's anything else to find in here. Would help if I closed. I can't, I can't do that. So yeah. Okay, apparently I'm dual wielding my weapon now. Alright, so with buttons in line, I don't know why I'm messing these up other than I've been playing with some other controllers occasionally, and what can you do? So you get a bunch of little demo messages down here in case you're unfamiliar with them. Uh, I do have my Monster Hunter sort of skills blinking in my mind with this, but there is a little auto target, so I gotta remember my stuff's pretty weak. And if we look over here, we can see a huge guy on a pile of treasure. Can we kill him right now? Well, I guess if I was a badass, I could do a soul level one with the sword hilt, but we'll be seeing him later. So let's hear more controls. I don't think I can backstab you with the sword hilt, so we'll just beat the crap out of you. I mean, you feel bad for these guys in a way, because they're undead, but they do have enough of awareness to know that they're just laying here 
locked away forever. But I do want to kill them because you can see that little 40 at the bottom of the screen is going to become 60 very soon. That's soul level, or those are souls, and you need soul points to actually level up your skills, abilities, and we'll get there. And to upgrade your gear, it's pretty much the currency in the game. One of the big challenges of the game is that when you die, you lose all of it. Now you can possibly recover it if you go back to the place where you die, but chances are you won't make it. So here's our first bomb fire in the game. Very important, it's how you save. I believe you can light a bonfire when you're undead like me, but you can't kindle it without being human. Which are all mechanics that we'll get back to later. Just know for now, a bonfire is important. They're where you save. I'm currently locked away in some jail, and oh ho! Look at what is up there. Little details that I did not realize were actually seeable. That is really nice. Because when I normally play this before, I would just walk up to the door and go, oh, surely nothing could possibly go wrong when I come in here. So, big ass door when I was supposed to be locked up. And unfortunately I nudged the mouse there. So, try and get that cursor out of there. I need to set it up to remove it. But who's coming to town? Get away. Oh, get away. There we go. Now, you can actually fight and possibly kill him with the sword hilt, you do get some really nice item drops if you can manage to do that. But we're not going to do that today because, quite frankly, I don't have those skills. But another bonfire. Now, I'm not too concerned about dying here. If I do, I'll be a little embarrassed. But as you've seen in other games, I am not as good at games wall talking as not. But arrows, that's cute. Now you can press and hold the B button to run, like so. So, spider shield, pretty nice. Well, not pretty nice, it's one of the reasons I chose the character. And you can get all kinds of different info on it. I do like it in part because it does give you some stability, yes, it does block physical damage. And I believe it actually does have some resistance as well. High resistance to poison, or has resistance to poison. Which, like I said, very important in Blight Town. So let's see a read message. Yeah, I know all this demo stuff. So we're gonna get an archer back there, get your shield up, and you're probably gonna run from me. Nope. Can I get you? Oh wow, I'm doing no damage to you. You you normally run. That's like a first that I've seen there. Alright, now I could hack away at him for a while. We're just going to do this the gamey way, I guess, if he's not going to run. Because usually, typically when i play played this game, he's run for cover in the past. But Battle Axe, much stronger weapon. Scales with strength. Scales with some dexterity as well. You can see that with the param bonus down there. But one of my bread and butter weapons, this weapon can last me almost the whole game. I mean, obviously you upgrade it, and obviously it's not the only thing I'm going to use, but I really do enjoy it, so. Change weapons, toggle items. Don't need to worry about that so much right now. Just need to kill this archer, and look at how much more damage I'm about to do. 64 versus a tiny little hilt. So I get a little bit more soul level, and now you're going to see a fog wall here. These are important because you have to... Once you pass through these, sometimes it's a little checkpoint like this. Sometimes it goes into a boss room. But it's the kind of place it's like you have to wait to try and traverse through here. So what do we got? Right now, B for backstep and rolling, which is very important. A lot of things are very important. Now there's a glowy thing up there. And unfortunately... We cannot get to it because the stairs are broken. I believe there's also a hidden wall around here that we cannot get to. Because I think it's up one level. So yeah, this is a place that you do come back to later in the game. It's actually substantially harder later in the game. But for now, we're just walking along. Doo -doo 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 -doo. And there's a ball up there that's going to be thrown into me at any second. Come on, don't disappoint me, buddy. Any there we go. So 
So before we do anything, let's do some housekeeping. Let's kill the guy that threw that at me. Said so you play this opening enough and you know kind of the dangers here. Now, we're gonna talk to, we're gonna have a very important conversation here in just a minute. As this guy. You may recognize him as the person that dropped a dead body that unlocked us oh, first. You. No, no, Holland. Thank goodness. I'm done for, I'm afraid. I'll die soon, then lose my sanity. I wish to ask something of you. You and I are both undead. Hear me out, will you? Regrettably, I have failed in my mission. But perhaps you can keep the torch lit. There is an old saying in my family. Thou who art undead art chosen. In thine exodus from the undead asylum, make a pilgrimage to the land of ancient lords. When thou ringeth the bell of awakening, the fate of the undead thou shalt know. Well, now you know. And I can die with hope in my heart. Oh, one more thing. Here, take this. An Estus flask. An undead favorite. Oh, and this. Now that originally was the key that I thought, hey, that would open it up. Now I must bid farewell. I would hate to harm you after death. So go now. And thank you. Now I bet I could kill him now, but... We're not going to do that today as I get a little bit of stuttering. Still some fun to be had with recording, but I can heal by pressing X. Estes flask, very important. Bonfires restore them as very odd. We're getting some jumping all of a sudden. So this is the door. And somebody just fell to their death and I don't know why. Or maybe that was that guy dying. So left stick plus right button is kick. I always forget that. There we go. And jump attack, which we're not going to worry about. And I don't know what in the world's going on. If I have cats clawing at the window or what, but that's kind of freaking me out that I have sounds from the side. What's not freaking me out is that there's some bad enemies around the corner. And these guys, this is actually my first ever death in Dark Souls. Because those guys just took me totally off guard. But once you learn the combat of the game, it's a little bit simpler. A little bit straightforward. So here, Archer, Archer, you're going to die. So there we go. And now we get another guy. A knight, a guy that you're going to be fighting quite a bit. Let me see if I can get a back attack on him. Probably not. Yep, there we go. That's what you want to do with this guy. You just want to get him knocked down just like that. And I do not believe that I have a key to open this as well. So there's another area where I'll need that. But yeah, we've gone through most of the opening. And while falling, press right button to do a plunging attack. Let's see if I can actually pull that one off. And I actually almost ran off without picking up an item as well. Broken straight sword. Do not need that. So let's see here. Traverse the white light. And this is where I'm saying before. Asylum demon. He's right there. He knows I'm coming. Oh. Okay, so I actually did half, half a health worth of damage. That was nice. Now he has, he's going to hit very hard possibly. So I'm just going to really try and play it safe. This is not the big guy we saw before, by the way. Because yeah, he actually does, yeah, he actually hurt me a little bit. Oh shit, he actually hurt me quite a bit. And this is where maybe I'd rather uh, go for my Monster Hunter skills here and just not have him auto locked on. But yeah, we're not going to get greedy here. His mace can really do a lot of damage. 
you can see, we're going to be doing a lot of crotch fighting in this game. Which means just standing up and literally looking at the crotch of the monster. So let's see, if I can end it here, I'm going to try. But no, for now, we want to not get killed. Now, stamina is important in this game because you can see every attack I do takes stamina. So I can't just roll, roll, roll and uh, fight whenever I want. And your stamina bar is not nearly as forgiving in this game as, say, Monster Hunter, where you can replenish it all the time. But there we go, that guy's dead. If you hear some big footsteps, that's coming from below. We're not going to worry about that right now. We're just going to go through this door. So, big pilgrim's key, activate. And what do we got? We've got a... Big place says developer message. Yay, good job. You can do it. Let's run up here. Run to freedom. So what we're going to do now is just kind of start the very opening of the game here. This is the little introductory sequence. As you can see, I'm running to the edge Only of the asylum. In the ancient legends, it is stated that one day an undead shall be chosen. Not a good Monday. To leave the undead asylum in pilgrimage to the land of the ancient lords. Lordran. So here is the world of the game, the main world, and all these areas that you're looking around, you can actually visit all of them. We're going to be starting down here in Firelink Shrine, where we're actually going to be starting this off by doing a little bit of corpse running. So let's just go ahead and go to the fire, just so we can freaking save. And we're going to level up as well. The reason we're going to level up is because I want to use as much of my stuff as I can, or as much as my soul level as I can. Now, souls are going to be pretty easy to come by later on, but I do want to go ahead and get 16 strength just to get that out of the way. And then I'm probably going to need some more vitality and endurance eventually. But let's see here. I have 117 souls remaining. That's just a few fights. And yeah, we're going to meet and greet some of the people later on, because there's a lot of people to talk to. And what do you say, little floating message? Let there be light, and a bunch of people upgrade it. I don't know. I don't know where that's coming from. But I'm going to do some sequence breaking stuff for you all real quick here to kind of end this first episode. This is for those of you who don't know. If you get the master key, you can kind of give yourself a little bit of a quick start. But it's going to take, well first off, I've got to actually get down the right staircase here. Um, it's going to take a little bit of work. It's going to take at least two deaths. But it's all stuff that's very important. Try jumping off. Yeah, people will troll you with messages. Any of those little glowy messages are either left by developers or people. And some of them are not always accurate. So we're going to go down here, which going down here is easy. And you can see real quick that we're actually going to encounter some enemies that die pretty quickly. Because we are in an area that is way high level for us right now. Well, that's okay. A lot of you are familiar with what I'm doing here if you've played this game before. It's a great way to open the game. Just to try and get some items early here. Now, I could possibly die in a hurry. There's all kinds of people here. They're not going to attack me unless I attack them. And as you see, they are pretty weak. Should be able to one-shot them, actually. But yeah, those 20 souls aren't going to do me a lot of good. This isn't actually a very good place to farm. What this is a good place to do, and we'll see if I can get this right. If I don't get it right, I'll just do it off camera. But we are going to be corpse running to that little stone island thing to the side. And in order to do that, it's been a while since I've done this, so I'm a little rusty. So I may actually get the pathing wrong. But if I have to do some selective edits, that's okay. 
I am all about selective editing. This B. Yep, we're probably gonna die. Run, run, run. Okay. Is this the way? I can never remember. That's the way. There we go. Firekeeper Soul, that's sequence break number one. Kill me now. Yay, I drowned. That Firekeeper Soul is very important because that'll let you upgrade your Estus Flask. Upgraded Estus Flasks heal for more. And how do we upgrade our Estus Flask, you ask? You go down here and talk to this very talkative, chatty Firekeeper that's right here. Talk, no response, she cannot speak. Reinforce Estus Flask. It only costs the soul. And now we have an Estus Flask plus one. So, yay, very useful. Means that we can heal for more, and healing for more is going to be key. Very good trade for just like 117 souls. Now the next corpse run here is to get some items. A lot of these are going to be things that I don't really use, but they're good to have. As you can see, there's a giant bottomless pit right there. We don't want that. Pull the lever, though, which it took me a really long time to figure out the first time that you can actually call this elevator back up. Yeah, we're just going to go up and down one more time, and we're going to take a different route this time. One that you need the master key for. You do not need the master key to get that Estus Flask. And it is an, it is an easy upgrade that I highly recommend that you get. But this time we are just going to go this way. And if I can... If for some reason it seems like the challenge of this game for me right now is just getting oriented with my directions. That's okay. Do 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 do. Cool. Alright, so we have some crime people here, but more importantly, we have another set of stairs up here. And you need the master key to actually open this. There's a few bridges and a few paths you can take. We're in the Valley of the Drakes now. Let's see here. If I cross this bridge, I know it's going to take me somewhere good. We don't want to go in there. That's Blight Town. That'll kill us. And there's some glowy things over there. And if there's something I miss, please tell me. Because I know there's definitely some... I know there's uh, plenty of good items you can get early in the game. My biggest concern is the Estus Flask, though. And, uh... Should be some other things you can get here as well. You see that big dragon? It looks totally dead. You don't want to mess with it, am I right? But, let's see here. Nothing can possibly go wrong having to grab things from the corpse. Dragon shield, and we're dead. One shot. Oh no, we're not dead. Now we're dead. So you died. Now there is another glowy light thing over there. And we'll just run and get it real quick. I'll actually pause the recording, but uh, if you're a faith based character, that's actually a pretty important weapon to try and pick up. Dragon Crest Shield is a very nice shield. It has good physical damage. It's a. Uh, reduces fire damage which is something you get quite a bit but a, a Torah's straight sword very important because it actually uh, does physical and magic damage and it actually upgrades through wisdom so it has a powerful blessing and it's a pretty fast weapon so great if you can get it early especially if you're building off of faith I'm not so let me just do a quick recut down to the other area and we'll see what that last little glowy shard is. Okay, so we're back and this dragon's actually still alive. I've never actually tried fighting this guy twice, but I have a feeling that little glowy stuff is something I'm not going to be able to get. We're going to give it a shot. Just one corpse run. Okay, he's doing some poison breath. Soul of the Proud Knight, not really what I was hoping for. But yeah, we're just probably going to eat it here. I'm going to just see if I can make it to the end of the valley. Because there's plenty of other items to pick up, but we're probably about at a place where we can call it a stopping point here. Or if I can find a very random bonfire. No, it looks like there's going to be a little drakes here. Who can eat me? So yeah, we are sequence breaking right now. Oh, yes. I am almost dead. How much damage am I going to do to you? None. Pretty much. So that's cool. 
So yeah, one nice thing is that all the areas in this game are areas that you can actually run to. So let's see, let's... that's not the way we want to go. I did not think I'm going to make this at all unless I can bait this guy. Alright, one more. Brigand, good. Died just in time, so those are all... Very nasty stuff, and I actually got the spider shield anyway. Oh, things I don't know, but look. Big giant dragon doors that I will not be able to get into for a while. So let's look at our spoils. Isn't it fun to explore just because you don't value your life? Let's see, here's my dogs roar disapprovingly. So, brigand, 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 brigand. You know, that's funny. Pretty much I ran all the way down there to get the uh, starter set for the bandit. Which I guess is good to know, because now I have multiple spider shields. So yeah, that's ironic. It's like, hey, I wanted to start as a bandit. Well, now I can start as a bandit. But yeah, still, that's Dark Souls to start with. We're going to be doing a full playthrough of this, and I hope you all enjoyed at least this starting one. Next time we're going to get more into meeting all the people that are around here, exploring up above, and seeing if maybe I can do something about my ugly undead face. But this is Way to Fail with a new series. Thank you all for voting in the viewer's choice poll that I had before. Hope you all enjoyed it. I will see you all next time.